was pretty feeble. Good morning. Good morning. That is so much better. It sounds like there are 20 more people who came in the doors just as we were doing it. Um, welcome back to people who have been away. So glad to have you here. For those of you who are after this Sunday going on travels, safe travels there, and even more important, safe travels home. A warm welcome to all of you who are worshiping together, to all of us who are worshiping together, in the spirit of Hope United Church Sanctuary in Edmonton, and to those of you who are watching virtually, so hello Mark McKenzie, through the live online broadcast. For those here in person, please stay for a time of visiting and refreshment after church, and today is movie day. I cannot plug Mad Hot Ballroom enough it is a perfect, actually, it's a perfect family, summertime entertainment. You are welcome here, whether this is your first time or you have come before. We welcome each other and share fully in the life of the church, regardless of age, ethnicity, gender identity, ability, sexual identity, or economic circumstances. You are welcome as you are. I am welcome as I am. We are welcome as we are for who we are, equally loved and valued by God. My name is Vicki Wynn. I'm not, I keep, I keep going over this, I'm not a member of the leadership team here, but Spirit of Hope United Church has a variety of ways in which you can become involved in the service of the church. and. Um, I partake in any that doesn't have a committee attached, just so you know. So there are ways that you also can become involved. There is a sign-up sheet, whether you would like to be a, a welcome greeter, whether you'd like to be the host for the service, uh, if you'd like to read the mission and service statement, if you'd like to read the scripture, if you would like to help serve coffee afterwards. There are ways in which you can serve each other. We can serve each other. As we acknowledge the land, we know that the land on which Spirit of Hope United Church sits was covered by Treaty 6 when it was signed in the 1870s, decades before this site was given the name Alberta. The territories of Treaty 6 are traditional meeting grounds, gathering places and travel routes of many indigenous peoples, including Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Nakota Sioux. Today, we are grateful and honored to gather on Treaty 6 land. Those of you gathering in other places, please be mindful and grateful for the history and legacy of the peoples who, to know the land where you are. This is the time for announcements. I just want to say that looking at the bulletin, the first uh, hymn that we're going to see, sing 315 Voices United, I just want you to know it's holy, 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 not holy, hoy, holy. Um, didn't want anybody to sing out, you know, just go, what's going on? Are there any other announcements other than that it is movie day today? No? Seeing none, hearing none, I feel like an auctioneer. Yes. We will go on, continue with the beginning of our service.
In the good times, in the bad times, in the ups and downs, God is with us. When we are doing well, God is with us. When we are struggling to make the right choices, God is with us. Come, let us worship the God who is always with us. And let's pray together in these words. Loving God, you surround us and we are grateful. Search us, know our hearts, and lead us in the ways that are everlasting. Amen.
are safe. And that we, even if we can't, you know, even if the person in the yellow coat there, the little person in the yellow coat, isn't thinking about the person they're holding their hands with, and even if they don't know what that person knows, doesn't see the car coming, they can trust that that person's going to look after them, even when they're not able to look after themselves. And it's kind of a scary thing to think, well, God is everywhere with me all the time, even when I'm, you know, thinking things or maybe even do stuff that maybe I don't think I want God to see. But God just doesn't let go. Uh, the, the, path, the Bible story we're going to read says, where could I go, God, and you wouldn't be there? What if I went all the way to the edge of the world? Would you be there? What if I went all the way to the tallest part that I could get to? Would you be there? And it just says, even there you are. And the, the, the poet kind of even says, what if I went right to the very end of everything? Even there, you'd be holding my hand. That's kind of a cool promise. Let's, let's have a, a prayer. And you can say some words after me if you like. Thank you, God, Thank you, God. for always being with me. For always being with me. Amen. Before I start, I just want to say how delighted I was when I opened up my email and saw the scriptures that uh, were chosen for me to read today. The first one, Genesis 28, 10 to 19a, it's hard to believe that it was three years ago that the time has sped by, because it's the story of Jacob's ladder. And last year I showed you the quilt that I had finished, that I had started three years ago with the blocks that were the Jacob's ladder block. Uh, and the second scripture, the psalm, is one of my very favorites, so I feel so fortunate and blessed to, to be your reader today. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he passed the night there. He took a rock and used it for a headrest and lay down to sleep there. During the night, he had a dream. There was a ladder standing on the ground with its top reaching to heaven, and messengers of God were going up and down the ladder. Yahweh was there standing over him saying, I am Yahweh, the God of Sarah and Abraham and the God of Rebekah and Isaac. Your descendants will be like the specks of dust on the ground. You will spread to the east and to the west, to the north and to the south, and all the tribes of the earth will bless themselves by you and your descendants. Know that I am with you. I will keep you safe wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will not desert you before I have done all that I have promised you. Jacob woke and said, Truly, Yahweh is in this place, and I never knew it. He was filled with trembling and said, How awe-inspiring this place is. This is nothing less than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob rose early the next morning and took the stone he had used as a headrest and set it up as a monument and anointed it with oil. Jacob named the place Bethel, House of God. Psalm 139, verses 1 to 12, and then 23 and 24. Yahweh, you've searched me and you know me. You know if I am standing or sitting. 
You read my thoughts from far away. Whether I walk or lie down, you are watching. You are intimate with all of my ways. A word is not even on my tongue, Yahweh, before you know what it is. You hem me in before and behind, shielding me with your hand. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, a height my mind cannot reach. Where could I run from you, Spirit? Where could I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. I could fly away with wings made of down or make my home on the far side of the sea, but even there your hand will guide me, your mighty hand holding me fast. If I say, the darkness will hide me, and night will be my only light, even darkness won't be too dark for you. The night will shine like the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Examine me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is misdeed within me and guide me in the way that is eternal. May the Spirit be our guide as we seek understanding of the word.
When Jimmy Page came up with that forbidden riff, uh, he hadn't yet sat down with Robert Plant to scratch out the lyrics to what would become the quintessential final song of every school dance that I attended in the late 80s and 90s. And although the song has nothing to do with the Jacob story that we just heard, the title is definitely inspired by Jacob's Ladder, a stairway to heaven. It's common for the lectionary series of suggested readings for each Sunday. It's common for them to tell a longer Old Testament story over several weeks in the summertime. And this year, uh, the Revised Common Lectionary has, has had the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament story, rolling us through the stories of the first families of faith, Abraham and Sarah. Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob. At the outdoor service last week, if you uh, listened to it or were there, you may remember that Jacob took advantage of Esau's short-sighted thinking to gain the firstborn brother's son's birthright. Esau gave his little brother permission to be the primary heir of the family in exchange for a warm bowl of soup. And I talked about how later in the story, Rebecca and Jacob would take advantage of Isaac's literal blindness to obtain the heir's blessing for Jacob that was intended for Esau. But in spite of all this ill-begotten status, Jacob did not enjoy the benefits of that status. Jacob had to flee his family home out of fear of reprisal for his deceit. I think he was mostly afraid that his older brother would hurt him, maybe even kill him. And so Jacob reverses the journey that Abraham and Sarah had made. Jacob was heading toward Haran, where Sarah and Abraham had lived before they were called by God to journey to Canaan, described as a promised land for them. Jacob was literally leaving behind the promise that God had made to Sarah and Abraham. In today's reading, Jacob has fled to the very edge of the promised land, near the Canaanite city of Luz. It's the place where Jacob when he, where he camped that night was the very place that his grandparents had built an altar as they first entered the land of promise. And it's here in this quiet, lonely wilderness that Jacob sleeps for the night. In a dream, as we heard, Jacob sees a ladder extending between the ground and up into the heavens. And he envisions that this causeway is filled with angels, with messengers of God, going back and forth between the realms of people and the realms of God. Jacob may have thought that, this, that he was alone, but this vision really did hint that there was a close and an active connection between God and humanity, between heaven and earth, between creator and creation. And that hint was confirmed even more when Jacob's vision included God themselves standing there, reaffirming Abraham's promise to include Jacob and Jacob's descendants, of which Jacob didn't have any yet. Think about it. Even though Jacob was literally reversing course on Abraham's journey toward that promise, Yahweh God says, your descendants will eventually be found in this land. They will spread far and wide like dust in the wind. Yes, that's my second 70s rock anthem <laughs> reference for today. Yahweh goes on and says, more than, one, more, than, more than that one day, Jacob, you're going to return to this land yourself, not just your family. And even though now you're leaving what was promised, you can know that I am with you wherever you go and that that promise 
remains. If we'd read a few verses longer into the chapter today, we would have heard that Jacob was spiritually changed by that experience, vowing to be as committed to Yahweh as Yahweh obviously was as committed to Jacob. So this latter dream, this conversation with God, sounds like it was an experience that came and went. It was a fleeting experience. And even if Jacob never had such a vivid connection to God again, Jacob was determined not to forget what had just happened. So Jacob used his, his rock pillow that he'd uh, used there. He built a shrine with it. He even held a sacred ceremony and anointed the stone. And we can be assured, even though it's not uh, detailed in our scriptural text, we can be assured that over the years, Jacob told and retold this story about his dream. And Jacob even encouraged visitors to the site to see the stone where he had declared was the house of God. It's a central theme that we too, as, as United Church of Canada people, make in the words of our creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. As Jacob envisioned, heaven and earth are connected. This world is God's world, and we are known and we are cared for by our Creator. Many centuries later, when the descendants of Jacob had indeed become the primary inhabitants of that land that Jacob left in today's reading, someone wrote a hymn extolling the omnipresence of Yahweh God. And even if the psalmist wanted to find a place where God wasn't, the psalmist realizes that no such place exists. And we heard 14 of the psalm's 24 verses today. Now, the lectionary chose to skip over the request to smite my enemies while you're at it, God. Uh, but it does include that final desire for an all-knowing God to search the heart and to lead us away from offensive thoughts. I think of Jacob leaving everything he's known and finding himself at the very edge of the land of promise. Maybe he wanted to stop and see the altar that Sarah and Abraham had built. Maybe he needed to camp there because he wasn't sure he could take the next step and leave it all behind. Loneliness can be a pretty complex experience. And a lack of meaningful interaction can result in feeling lonely not only when we're alone. We can be in the midst of a busy and bustling crowd and we can be totally alone. And on the other hand, we could be in a place where no other person is around and we can find meaningful interactions and not feel alone. Did you see the story of the Australian sailor who was lost in the Western Pacific Ocean last week? Storm knocked out all of the boat's electronics, GPS, uh, all of the uh, ability to cook, uh, to know exactly where they were. Apparently, a stray dog came on the journey because this dog simply wouldn't leave his side as he was getting ready to set sail from Mexico. And this dog was the companion along this uncertain journey before an unexpected and really miraculous rescue happened. The dog provided purpose, companionship, and hope. We don't all have that kind of experience of finding connection in loneliness. But you, as you can imagine, I'm sure, being on a solitary journey through the woods, you may think you're alone, and then all of a sudden, unseen to you is a noise in the bushes beside the path, a bustle in your hedgerow, so to speak. Maybe it's a bird. Maybe it's a squirrel. Maybe it's a bunch of big ants. Maybe it's something bigger, and it's announced its presence. And in that moment, even without clear 
visible interaction, you know that you're not alone. And it can, your response can range from reassurance to terror. The reality that you're not alone doesn't cease to be true even when that shuffling, that bustling in the woods fades away. You might not hear it anymore, but you from that point on, you know that now those silent hedgerows are bustling with life. Both Jacob and the psalm writer came to believe that even in quiet or distant places, God was present. Now, sometimes we're lucky to get very clear reminders of that, uh, a spiritual bustle in your hedgerow. Uh, and yet, both Jacob and the psalm writer say the promise remains. Even in the midst of silence, we're not alone. There is nothing forbidden about that riff. It's central to the entire theme of our scriptures and the faith that's been passed on to us. The promise in today's scriptures is that in the good times, in the bad times, in the ups and the downs, that God is with us. When we're running away, God is with us. When we're doing well, God is with us. When we in need, are in need of forgiveness and in need of a cathartic understanding of who we are, God is with us. When we are struggling to make a choice, God is with us. God does not abandon us no matter what. No matter what we do, what we think, no matter anything about us. Like Jacob, the question becomes, can we trust that our God is in our midst even when it's not obvious? Jacob remembered that dream in the wilderness long after the dream faded away into his subconscious. The anointed rock served as a reminder, at least for a while, but being at that rock didn't mean that you too would experience the stairway to heaven. But simply remembering the promise of God's presence was enough. You or I might have our own fleeting experiences when we have felt the presence of God in a, a compelling, personally impactful way. And like Jacob, maybe it's associated with a place or a mystical experience. It might be remembered in a strain of music or a passage of scripture, a poem, a section of prose. It might be housed in the, the work of visual art. It might be in the face of someone else. It might even be in a time of shared worship like this. Now, like the psalm writer, can we be convinced that our God is intimately and knowingly in our midst, even when that's not obvious? The very definition of grace is that God knows all of our hard truths, like God knew Jacob, and still judges us worthy of compassion and love. That we don't need to buy a stairway to heaven because it's a gift. There but for the grace of God go I. Amen.
Let's pray together. Wonderful God, find us in silence, find us in crowds, in chaos, in serenity. God, be with all of your people, of all of your creation. Be the tie that binds us all together and brings us purpose and unity and hope. We pray, God, for friend and neighbor, for ourselves, for loved ones and strangers. We think particularly, God, all those who are affected by harsh weather, whether it be unusually high heat, violent storms, floods, drought. We pray, God, for the people of Odessa as war is coming to their doorsteps again, simply because they are a causeway to share food. We pray, God, for all who are ill, worried, afraid. We pray, God, for those who grieve, whether the grief is fresh or lingering. We pray, God, for all those who offer care care to those they love, care to strangers, care to people without newcomers, those who are set aside by others. God, we pray for all who are longing to know that they are loved and that they are valued just as they are. And hear us, God, as we echo words of Jesus, praying modern words of an old prayer. Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine power and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As Vicki mentioned uh, at the start of our service, there's so many ways that we can offer to support each other as this particular uh, church, uh, and there are many ways that we serve God's world beyond this. Uh, as we take a moment to share some offerings uh, with the church. Let's be mindful of all the other ways we are, are giving for each other. And let's hear a bit of the story of the impact of our generosity. Before I start this one, because this is um how our mission is serving people in Africa. Just want to remind you that on August 6th is the luncheon that Spirit of Hope United Church provides for the inner city pastoral ministry. And any donations made to help purchase the food are more than welcome. The Ecumenical Youth Leadership Development Program. The Zimbabwe Council of Churches will be hosting an annual three-day youth leadership development program in 2023. In partnership with Mission and Service, the program will host 50 youth from 10 provinces to increase young people's knowledge and skills as active citizens. Through involvement in education around policy reforms, electoral and budgetary processes, natural resource governance, and peace building, youth will gain skills in nation-building processes. The young people will take their skills and experiences from the program to their churches and communities. They will have the knowledge and resources to create their own plans of action and opportunities to regularly meet 
or check in with other attendees. The Zimbabwe Council of Churches will continue to engage young people in all of its programming to ensure the voices of youth are represented and heard. Your gifts to mission and service help develop and continue programs where young people can flourish. Thank you for helping to give youth the space to learn and grow. pray in gratitude. To you, loving God, we offer the gifts of our service. Take the labor of our hands, the skill of our minds, the power of our organization. Cleanse us of arrogance and awaken us from indifference. May we become better servants of your compassion. Amen. not alone. We live in God's world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.